Hey, hey, what's up, guys and gals? It's me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose. And today we're playing a little more Farm Expert 2017. Now, this is video three in our series where we're going through the tutorials. Our first tutorial, we did difficult weather and terrain conditions. After that, we prepared the field to sow it. And today, guess what? We're sowing it. So we'll take a look at what the planting procedures are like within the game. Uh, and we'll just kind of see what kind of changes have been made recently. Uh, there have been a lot of updates to the game through Steam. Uh, I keep seeing constantly I get a download here or there. Uh, so they are working on the game and tweaking it a little bit, which is always good to see when a developer puts it out and they do uh, constantly tweak the game after it comes out. Uh, if you get one and they don't do updates after you know the first week or so, you're probably not going to get any updates, period. So... All right, here we are back at our field. We're probably going to get the same old little tutorial thing about how to drive and all that other stuff. But uh, but anyways, it tells us a little bit about cedars being used to sow various uh, things into the ground. Cedars also different capacities and working widths. Okay, yep. You can fill the cedars in a home warehouse or you can buy the seed in the store. Yeah, that's one of the things I noticed about this game is uh, just looking around at it. You actually have to go to the store and buy seed most of the time. So, um, anyways, let's do this. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to head over here to our tractor. And we'll go ahead and get in uh, using the E key to enter. All right. In simulation mode, you must manually start the engine by spacebar. Driving your direction can be changed with the Z key, which I actually have that set up on my steering wheel instead. This is that same uh, Lambini or whatever that we've been using. So, all right, we got to go over and connect the cedar up over there. So, let's go ahead and drive forward a little bit. As you remember, uh, when we change directions, our little computer up here, or our monitor, is going to change and give us a backup guide, uh, which is pretty cool. One thing I noticed about this game, and I and I really dig, and I've always had this kind of gripe in uh, Farm Sim, the camera going past uh, when you're looking to to the right, the camera won't go past 180 degrees. Uh, and the same thing when you go left, it won't go past this point right here, which your neck in real life isn't going to do that. So it shouldn't do that in the game. So I kind of dig the fact that they actually have that uh, set up in the game. All right, let's pull forward just a little bit. It's kind of finicky here getting this uh, in the right spot. There we go. All right, we are connected. Drive to the field. Did that thing lower down? Looks like it's dragging the ground. R lowers the machine. Eh, no, it's good. All right, so let's get out of here. Now, what did we learn in the last episode? We learned that not only do we have gears that we can go through, we also can change the range. And make this thing go a bit faster. Oh, it doesn't seem like we're going that much faster. Still quite a bit of bouncing on the road here. Uh... I can't really tell. It doesn't really seem like they reduced it any. All right, so we're going to sow the field. I'm going to put this in B range. And I'm going to lower my gear down to really first or second. All right, so let's come on up here to the field. Line up on it. Looks like we're sowing a little wheat. All right, so R lowers the unit down. And then to put down our marker, we hit T. We're good there. All right, so we should be good to go now. 
Oh. Come on. Yeah, I just kind of hesitated there and didn't drive for me. Not a bad speed. So this particular one's got a little, uh, it's got a little sod uh, ground buster on the front of it. If you see the animation of it, actually tilling the sand, the, the, the ground a little bit. Alright, 1B a little bit slower than I want, so in the next pass we'll probably go a little bit higher. I think we can plant faster than 6. Alright, let's bring our marker up, bring that up. Rotate around a little bit here. Yeah, let's give it another gear. But then again, the jump between first and second, as we've learned, is quite drastic. All right, so we want to line up. Yeah, again, second gear is really wants to just fly out. There is no finesse in this. I'm really not digging that. Change gears there. All right, let's line up on our marker. Now again, the, the idea between your side markers, if you've never planted before or anything, you're just kind of learning off this. Your ridge marker basically gives you your guide for where your tractor is going to go the next time. So when I put my ridge marker down, as I drive forward, if I keep the tractor centered, that ridge marker is where I want the center of the tractor to be, and that way I'll plow right. But now if you notice, and I knew this was going to happen, they still haven't fixed it. I was hoping they would fix it in a patch. If you look out at the ridge marker on my left, it's got the ridge marker way, way out there, which means it's going to be useless for me um, when I go on my return trip back up. Because the ridge marker should be centered with the ridge marker, because all it is is a little hoe that's creating a little furrow in the field that you just line up with. And... Um, that's what gives you your guide for going, but they've got it messed up. So if I were to center my vehicle on that, um, I would no way, I would have a big gap in the field left over if I did it. So the only way to combat that is to put the ridge marker out, follow it with my right tire and, uh, and go that way. That's not the way it's supposed to be, but that's the way we're going to have to do it in the game in order for us to make sure that we get good coverage in the field but that's messed up they they really need to get that fixed it works fine on the right right ridge marker but the left ridge marker is is messed up it just puts it way too far out and to me that's just silly you know just silly that they put the game out with something like that messed up in it. You're telling me that one of their people didn't play it and realize, hey, uh, boss, uh, isn't that ridge marker supposed to be like right there in the center? Oh no, uh, we're gonna need to put it out there for a challenge. That's just uh, it's just a reference. All right, so we'll move on. Yeah, that's pretty funny. That's uh, that's footsteps in the dirt. That's your that's uh, your invisible helper out there hoeing that line for you. So. Two things I've come to realize in this is 
There's no good intermediary speed on this tractor. There just isn't. You're either in granny gear going or you're going too fast. Because I'm, I'm trying to use third and there is no finesse at all to this. There just really isn't. There's no way for me to finesse the tractor up through here other than pop the gas and then let it drift. There is no nice slow 10 mile an hour speed in this. Again, I can gear down to second and I can drive in second fine, but I can't start in second. It just lopes really bad. Yeah, it's just so the front of it just keeps popping up. That's not a traction issue. That's that's something within the game as far as how they've set it up for torque or something. I mean, it just it does it constantly. Some other people have noticed that as well. I've got some other friends that are playing this and they've they've all said the same things too. They just I mean it's pretty blatantly obvious. Again, as soon as I tap the gas, this thing just lurk lunges forward. There should be a little bit of finesse. I should be able to um to have it go just a little ease off of this so that I can keep my line and everything else like that and that's the biggest issue is not being able to hold the line when you start off and have it just fly out ahead of you it's just too it's not realistic I mean, either, I don't know, unless you got a really bad motor that's got fuel flow problems. All right. And on around here. I was sort of, I'm a little disappointed in this uh, tutorial so far. I got to tell you that. I was really hoping that it would go through the whole process of um, buying the seed, filling up your cedar, um, and then actually sowing the field. Uh, and also the step of fertilization, you know? Uh, they sort of just skipped the whole process there. Uh, and I'm disappointed in that. I was really hoping that so the field would be go through, um, fertilize it, go buy your seed, um, fill up your cedar, all that good stuff. But no dice. It's just basically run through the field with the cedar and. Uh, learn that this tractor is absolutely horrible. See, I just, there's no finesse at all. It just either takes off running or or lopes the whole time loping would be the word for it I'm barely even touching my fuel pedal on my uh, G27 that's wide open right there right eight and that's barely touching it right there it's either it's basically all or nothing it seems like on the uh, the controls and maybe that's because it's designed, this game is uh, maybe set up to be keyboard catted because 
it doesn't seem to be my my G27 just doesn't ha seem to have um, any any variation in the fuel pedal it seems like you're either wide open or you're off of the gas on or off basically so in that I could set it to a switch and just use it I would like to see them fix that Yeah, the only way I can slow up is by just letting off of the fuel pedal. Otherwise, it's full bore. You're on it. You're going. I mean, even on old tractors, you could adjust your speed with the by increasing or decreasing the RPM of the motor. So, not a big fan of that part of this. It makes for sloppy gameplay, I will say that. If you're looking to be precise and good straight furrows and all that good stuff, it's hard to do with this thing being as sloppy as it is. I mean, really, first gear is your best bet. I wonder if I just changed the range. I shifted to C range, which really is not a plowing range, but. I switched up to it to see how that works. Maybe that'll work a little bit better for us. That's D range there. Doesn't seem like we really picked up any speed at all. But first gear, at least we have precision. It's not, the tractor's not loping, trying to jump across the field on us. It's a little bit smoother. Let's change our camera view and do one interior view. There we go. Mix this up again. We got to be on the right wheel for this. We'll go ahead and put our ridge marker down. Nice little sound effect of the ridge marker going down. And we'll just keep that dark line off the front of the tractor yeah if you want to play this game with any sense of urgency um, meaning if you want to go faster than seven miles an hour um, be prepared to miss a lot of spots so ooh, improved ability sower too bad I'm gonna lose that when I actually uh, in the tutorial because there's absolutely no way to save your progress in the tutorials and somebody had asked me uh, in a thing they had said something about help I can't save any of my progress on the tutorials you can't it's not the game's not set up that way I don't know why but you take the time to do the tutorials and you cannot save your process all you can do is at the very end just close the game out and um, be done restart uh, that's sort of a big flaw they've got with this as well I would say is the fact that they don't have they don't have it set up so you can actually save your progress through the tu tutorials and to me there ought to be a little bit of a you know that ought to be that little bit of a head start you get for the game if you take the time to do the tutorials and you get the little things like improved driver or improved sewing or improved plowing those little achievements that you get while you take the time to do the tutorial 
I think that ought to translate into the actual game itself. So, uh, but for some reason, they omitted the ability to save your progress when you finish the tutorial. Uh, so anything that you do is just uh, is is just tossed. So, yeah, if you get to the end of a tutorial and you can't actually save your progress and move on, uh, don't be surprised. It's just not a built-in part of the game that allows you to uh, to do such a thing. So you see the little 80% overneath the uh, the cedar that gives us our capacity on it, lets us know how much is left on it. Another thing a little do of notice is uh, you can see down in the bottom right hand corner of the uh, where the speedo is and the gear and RPM. You'll see 80% that lets me know the durability of this tractor. It's 80% uh, wore out or it's uh, still 80% health. So 20% of it has been uh, taken out. And then you can see our fuel. And then the other little thing I noticed, it's kind of cool. I mean, it's it's kind of nice. If you look in the left hand at the screen where it shows us the arrow as we're going across field. And if you look at the field, you notice there's two uh, gra ground textures. There's sort of a, a brownish on one side. And then on the, on the other side, it's more of a, a lighter brown or a more of a beige where we've actually already seeded the field. If you look down at the map... You'll notice that same image is being mirrored uh, in the mini map. So you can actually see the progress of the field in the mini map. I mean, that's kind of cool. Kind of cool. All right, let's go ahead and raise that up. The back cam is kind of nice too. It keeps you from constantly having to look around and you know look back and see what you're doing, because you can at least see the the ground because it is a reactive camera and you're actually seeing a honest representation of what's going on in the field. Uh, when we come in here and we set, I can actually drive the tractor into the field and I can see where the field begins in the in the cam and uh, where it ends so when I get to the other end I don't have to turn around and look for the edge of the field I can just drive straight on forward glance up at the uh, the camera and I can see when the cedar actually reaches the end of the field I think that's a cool little feature as well I mean, like I said there's some stuff in this game that's really cool if they could work out some of the mechanics that they've got in the game uh, it's a pretty pretty neat little game but it's some of the performance issues that drive me nuts um, all right so we shift in the second gear and all of a sudden we're off to the drag races in this thing which granted we are in in high range Let's switch the range back down uh, to first or to A range. And I'm going to go and finish up planting here. It's telling me something about fertilization. So I missed something because I was paying more attention to the, to the tractor. and T all right and we're in first gear a range I'm gonna step it up to second let's see if it takes off like a rocket no uh, it's not too bad as you can see we're all over the place speed wise we're anywhere between six and nine kilometers and it makes it that much more difficult to uh, to control. That lurching is just crazy.
All right, one last little section to do, and then we'll be we'll be done with this. Uh, actually, yeah, hopefully we can get it in one little section. And this thing just constantly lopes. Yeah, I might have to make one more pass to get it perfect. For sure, if I was planting this for for real, I'd come back and catch that little strip on the headland. Yeah, we got this part of this the seeding done. I don't know if there's more to this or not. Um, you would think they would uh, go through some stuff. But I'll tell you another thing I like about this, though, is the fact that you've got to go buy seed. And you have to fill the seeder up with the seed that you're going to do. Um, is really nice. Because one of the things I've never really liked about... Uh, that other farm game. I try not to talk about it too much, but um, One of the things I don't really like about farm sim is the fact that you just put this generic seed in your um, In your in your sower and then you go out and you plow your field with it and you select what you're plowing and you're planting Never have been a fan of that Why am I going backwards? Okay, I'm in, I'm in, whoa, hello. Um, got a little glitch here. Yeah, that's stupid. All right, so let's see if we can finish this up. It does not like the idea of sewing outside the boundary, apparently. That's interesting. Anyways, the one thing I've never liked about that is putting that generic seed in and then just selecting what you're planting at each field. Uh, I like the idea of having to put in a set seed type into your sower uh, and then go sow your field. And then when you're done, empty out your seeder into whatever reserve you have and uh, hang on to it. Or the universal seed so in this one you have to really think about what a, uh, what grains you can plant because the other thing about this is uh, on this particular game and we're gonna head back to the farm now the other thing about this one is you have to get a grain silo for each grain that you're actually planting so if I'm planting wheat uh, or if if my farm only has a silo for wheat I can only plant wheat if my farm only has a silo for canola I can only plant canola so that's one of the cool things also about this game is is um, you know you've got to upgrade your farm you've got to put in the silo for what you're actually going to be um, sowing you know you can't really you can't really harvest you know soybean if you don't have a soybean facility you know or a silo for it unplug the cedar I believe that would be unhook the cedar some of the translations uh, don't really work but that's all right so Let's put the cedar back where we got it from. There we go. Um, you gonna let me unhook it? Oh wait, I think I have to. I think I have to lower it to the ground in order to get it to to do that. Let's check that out. 
if I lower it all the way down there we go yep had to lower it all right so connect the fertilizer spreader so we are doing fertilizer all right well, that's cool uh, switch into drive I want to gear down some here Now, I'm going to show y'all something kind of funny, but let's back up to this and connect. Oh, boy, it just shot out like that. Reverse in high range is um, it's quite, quite quick. Uh, let's see, connect. There we go. Drive to the field. Apparently, this thing's full as well. Oops. So real quick, let me look at the the F1 or F2. Nope, that's not what I want to look at. Map tutorials. If you look at the tutorials and well, this one isn't going to give me the actual tutorials for in the game. The tutorials here are different than in the game. Well, actually, no. Fertilizing just before sowing and planting you should carry out the, the field fertilization to do that use a specific fertilizer or a synthetic fertilizer Purchased in the agricultural store or natural ones produced by animals. So again, it's telling you you should fertilize before sowing But in the tutorial it has us uh, fertilizing after we sow Kind of funny it just kind of stood out in my mind right there. I was kind of like, oh, this is kind of funny. Which one is it, farm expert? Do I fertilize before or after? Doesn't matter. I always like to fertilize before I sow, though. And then come back and do like field dressings. All right, so we are uh, in to check out the new objective. Fertilize the field, drive to the field, connect the fertilizer spreader, unplug the cedar. Oh no, uh, that's the reverse order. I gotcha. All right, so uh, to start fertilizing, we hit T. I don't know what the working width of this is. I'm going to assume it's pretty broad. Um, I could be wrong on that, though. It could be quite narrow. Yeah, I slow down. I do not... Oh, it's got quite a working width to it. Okay. You can't really tell from where I was that it was that wide of a width. Driving this thing is like driving a, bon a, bro a, bro a bucking bronco. Say that easily when you haven't had any coffee in the morning. All right, switch gears. Too many buttons to click. Change my range back down. <laughs> nice. Yeehaw! Hang on for eight seconds there, Moose. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, so it's got quite a broadcast on it, even though it only looks like it's spreading out eight inches. Yeah, if I had known that, I might have been able to uh, do a little better job on this. So we're going to have quite a bit of waste.
I gotta tell you, the performance on this tractor drives me nuts. Maybe a front weight would help it out, but... I mean... The way it acts right now is just way too overly aggressive. Especially on a planted field. And the funny thing is it doesn't buck nearly as bad. Oh, I'm just going to drive through the field with this. I got to see. It doesn't jump nearly as bad in D range as it did in A range. All right, change the range. Change the range, not the gear. Change the gear back up. It's not bucking nearly as bad. Weird. I can't figure this thing out sometimes. Hmm. Back to the house we go. Oh, and congratulations, you have completed the tutorial. All right, so that was it for it. Uh, we've got it done. There's nothing else for us to do. Which brings me back to my earlier point. There's really no way for me to get out of this, uh, this scenario other than close the game out completely. So if we check out the... Space bar is what turns the engine off, gets rid of all that noise. If we go into escape now, all I can do is resume. It won't let me save. Save game is only good for if you're doing a career path, uh, if you're actually doing a let's play or a playthrough of the game. If you're just doing the tutorials, it does not give you the option to save. So the only way that you can move to the next tutorial, I'm guessing, is to actually close out of the game, unless you could go elm tutorial um preparing the field cultivation see and over here it doesn't list all of the tutorials these are just i guess these are just like regular infos that you can use here in the game to give you some you know some info on what you're doing but they don't actually, these aren't the video tutorials. The video tutorials, you have to actually close out the game, restart the game to do the next one. So, anyways, which is what I will do. I will close out the game and I will uh, start up the next one and we'll cover that in our next episode. But anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a look at sewing with Farm Expert 2017. If you liked the video, make sure you smash that like button. And again, thanks so much for your support, guys. I do appreciate it. And uh, if you like the game, let me know. If you want to see more, let me know. Uh, I've planned, like I said, I plan on doing all the tutorials and then maybe starting a little playthrough on it and uh, just going with it. It's just, uh, I, again, I like a lot of the uh, a lot of the elements of this game. I really do. Uh, it's just some of the tractor work is kind of sloppy, uh, which drives me a little bit nuts. So, but I am looking forward to doing a little play, uh, gameplay on it. So, uh, anyways, we'll get into that as soon as we get done with the uh, tutorials. But thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, I hope you consider giving it a like, maybe even sharing it with your friends. It does help me out a tremendous amount and is greatly appreciated. Also, leave some comments down below. That's really the only way I can gauge if you guys are enjoying what's being put out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want daily notifications. I try to do a new video each and every day. Also, if you want to stay in touch with me and find out what's going on, our social links are down in the bottom left-hand corner. 
Twitter is where I usually announce schedule changes, live streams, and new video releases. Facebook's a great way to get in touch with me if you have any questions to ask. And of course, I am trying to get to a thousand followers on Google+, Plus, which I know I'll probably be old and gray before that happens. But if you can jump over there and follow me, it would be super awesome. So if you like today's video, there's a whole lot more content on the channel. I hope you'll browse through it, find something to keep yourself entertained until the next video or live stream. Speaking of live streams, I try to do them nightly around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Until the next time, thanks again for watching. See you soon.